So here we've got a, a vegan uh, pelleted dry food, raw meat, and then the meat and vegetable. So we've had a lot of very high profile people talking about they're now feeding their dogs vegan food. Is that a good thing? Dogs have evolved over thousands and thousands of years to primarily eat a meat diet. And dogs aren't like cat. Cats are what we call obligate carnivores. They, they have to have a meat diet. Dogs are what we call facultative carnivores, which means ideally they want to eat the majority of their diet as meat. They can eat some non-meat uh, fruits, things like that, and we know they do. You know, they, <laughs> I, my dogs have been going out and eating the plums in my garden. Now, the fact they can eat some is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, my dogs end up with, uh, you know, very nasty, loose feces as a result of eating those plums, but they like them. The point is that about a facultative carnivore is that they can eat other things, but we don't necessarily consider that those are good things for them. Evolutionary wise, a dog would survive best on a very high percentage of meat in its diet. As we reduce that amount of meat, and, and if we eliminate meat uh, completely, we still don't really know if that's, that's a good thing for dogs long term. You know, we, this is something we've only really been moving over to, I'd say, you know, in recent years. And we don't yet really know the long term consequences for, for dogs of a purely uh, vegetable based diet. What's it missing? Meat is incredibly high in creatine it doesn't exist in plants. You can only get creatine from eating a meat-based diet or, a, a, or from adding creatine to the feed. For an athletic dog in particular, creatine, I would say, is essential. Creatine supplements have been used in human sport at high level for about 15, 20 years now, and they are, they are beneficial. Um, and if people are not on a meat diet, then they would take possibly, you know, even more indication to take a creatine supplement. So there may still be things that are missing from these, these vegetable based feeds that are not being provided from a meat diet. A dog can survive on a diet like this. The question is, is it going to thrive on a diet like this? And I don't think I'd be looking to feed this to a working dog. That would be based on my knowledge of what's in the you know, scientific literature based on, you know, my knowledge of dog nutrition, I don't think I would. Decision. So it's the raw meat with some vegetable. No, is it? <laughs> right, we need to bring a Labrador in. No, here we go. <laughs> here we go. It's the raw meat with the vegetable. So, come on in, have a go, Mac. What do you think? Oh, easy, easy. <laughs> straight. <laughs> Sniff that. <laughs> straight for the meat with a little vegetable in. And then straight on to the raw meat. Okay, so now we're going to try Brody with the three foods. Brody, come on in. Oh, so. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> if you've ever owned a Labrador, you know, <laughs> half the time you, you think when you get back from a walk, do I really need to feed my dog? Because I've seen it eat half a dead rabbit and I've seen it eat in you know, a half a pigeon. Dogs have a, an incredibly robust gastrointestinal system. The sort of stuff that we eat that would, you know, give us, either make us vomit or give us serious diarrhea is no consequence to most dogs. They have a, a high tolerance. So even if the meat isn't, you know, been particularly well, the hygienic quality is not that great and, and would make a person ill, for a dog, it's usually fine. So, you know, if your dog is healthy on a raw meat diet, fine. And your dog's performing well and is healthy, stick with that. If your dog is, is happy on the uh, tin diet, fine. If your dog's got a problem, the one of the first places you start to look at is the diet. You know, if your dog's got a skin problem or your dog is losing weight, you obviously start looking at the diet as one of the key reasons for trying to understand what's going on. All right, last thing. Can you give me like the top five things not to feed your dog? Okay, so five of the things that would be really toxic to dogs would be uh, garlic, Good dogs should never have garlic. Uh, onions, which are part of the same family. Chives, they're all, part of the same family. Um, surprisingly enough, avocados, 
which are quite sweet tasting and, uh, and, and I'm sure dogs would like. Uh, a bit of a strange one is macadamia nuts. Uh, they're fairly toxic. And then I'm sure most dog owners would already know grapes, raisins, sultanas, anything like that is, is a real sort of uh, thing to avoid. And of course, uh, the big one is chocolate. And chocolate's a really weird one because uh, again, my Labrador won Christmas somehow when I had young children, ate three advent calendars, absolutely fine. But you know, some dogs can eat one square of chocolate and will have, uh, you know, really nasty convulsions as a result and be really seriously ill. So it's best to steer, you know, clear of chocolate completely as well, unless it's, it, unless it's the, the, the specific dog chocolate that's produced, which should be safe.